Hi everyone, and welcome to the AI Syndicate channel. Today we have a couple of my very close friends that are helping me with the introduction to this video. Incidentally, they all are saying the same things I am, and they even have the same voice as I do. Now obviously that wasn't entirely true. While I would love to have such famous personalities on the channel, our channel just isn't there yet. That footage was made possible using artificial intelligence. I'm your host Anj Malik, and this is the Innovation Showcase. Today we have a paper titled, Make It Talk, by Zhu et al, and that is exactly what it does. Given an audio sample and just a single portrait image, they propose a technique that is capable of synthesizing a talking head video. On the left, we have the input image, and on the right, we have the synthesized video from my voiceover. How cool is that? Doing just that would be cool, but that's not it. The proposed technique can animate not just photorealistic faces, but cartoons as well. Well, of course he will. The Trials of Arabella by Brioni Talis. And not just cartoons, but any photo that vaguely resembles a face. Mummy, you can finally crack open the champagne. That is incredible. But that's not it. And this is for all the AI enthusiasts out there. What if the synthesized video could have head movements and expressions animated to match the performance and energy of the input speaker? Or in other words, the animation could be speaker aware. That would be incredible. And guess what? This technique does it all. Watch the head movements closely in these two videos. Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you tease me so? Oh, Mr. Bennett, how can you tease me so? Unbelievable. The synthesized video is aware of the expressions portrayed by the two different speakers and takes it into account for the head pose. Now, how is all this possible? First, Let's examine how the authors manage to synthesize such a wide range of animation content, including not just photorealistic human images, but also cartoon images, sketches, and much more. To be able to do this, their technique predicts facial landmarks, as seen here, as an intermediate representation that also preserves the speaker characteristics. In contrast, other techniques in the field directly generate either 3D morphable face models or raw pixels. This limits them to synthesizing animations with just human faces and a general difficulty in generalizing to things like cartoons and sketches. Next, let's dissect how the authors were able to preserve expressions and speaker characteristics from the input audio. Needless to say, Synthesizing realistic facial expressions and head movements, as we see in these animations, just from an audio input and a single portrait, is extremely challenging. The trick in their technique is to disentangle the speech content of the audio from the expressions and head motion dynamics that the network can infer from the audio sample. This disentanglement leads to the realism in the head movements that we see in these videos and helps them outperform some of the other techniques that we have seen before. What an excellent idea. The pipeline contains two main modules. One is the speech content animation that is responsible for synchronizing the jaw, the lip, and the nearby face regions with the input speech content in the audio file. The other module is the speaker-aware animation module that brings the essence of the speaker's expressions and head movements into the facial landmarks. Then, the predicted landmarks are converted to animations using either face warp or image-to-image -image translation. Now, how could something like this alter our lives in the future? And what are some of the specific applications of this technology that I personally like? The most obvious one is animation. The technique lends itself well to animated content. The second one, and one which a lot of people would appreciate in these current times, is video conferencing. I for one can testify that there are days when I just don't want to switch on my camera for a Zoom video conference. 
A technique like this could help you share your face during your virtual meetings without ever turning on your camera. I sure look forward to that. Obviously, there is the added benefit of reduced bandwidth required as well during the video conference. Now, these are just a few of the applications. The authors foresee this as being used in dubbing and many other applications as well. It should be noted, however, that with cutting edge innovations such as this, there is always the possibility of misuse. Spreading information and awareness about how feasible it is to generate deep fake videos of this sort is definitely a step in the right direction to make the public aware of these techniques. I therefore applaud the authors for making their code and research available to the public. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, smash the like button and show some love in the comment section. Links to the open source repository of the project as well as the original paper can be found in the video description below. If you would like to see a tutorial on how to use this code to make talking head videos for yourself, let me know in the comment sections. If you want to see more videos like this, join the AI Syndicate by clicking the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell. Until next time.